César Chávez, Fighting for Farm Workers, by Eric Braun, illustrated by Harry Rowland, Al Milgram, Steve Irwin, and Charles Barnett III. Chapter 1. A Youth of Hard Labor. In 1933, times were hard for the Chávez family. Librado Chávez could not afford to pay the taxes on his small farm in Arizona. Leave or go to jail. You couldn't pay your taxes, so the land is no longer yours. At the time, the Great Depression had taken hold in the United States. Many Americans were poor and out of work. The Chavez family filled their car with all the belongings they could fit. They left everything else behind. What about my cat? There's no room for him, Cesar. The uprooted family drove to California. They found jobs picking crops on other people's land. The Chavises were one of thousands of migrant families in California looking for farm work. The work was often dangerous and the pay was poor. Hurry up and finish eating, children, so we can go to sleep. We'll have to wake up before dawn. Why? To claim our jobs for the day. But I'm still hungry. For years, the Chavez family harvested crops in California. They picked carrots, cotton, grapes, and lettuce. When work was finished in one place, they drove to another farm to work. The growers call this stuff green gold, Cesar. The lettuce might be gold for them. They make plenty of money while we break our backs doing the work. Growers hired contractors to oversee the farm workers. Many of these bosses were greedy. They found ways to cheat workers out of money. You said four dollars a day. I changed my mind. Now it's two dollars. Take it or leave it. Cesar, Rita, let's go. This treatment is unfair. We won't work here. Huelga. If workers are cheated or abused, we refuse to work. It doesn't matter how hungry we are. We won't work there. Huelga. Huelga is Spanish for strike. Striking workers refused to work until employers gave them a say in deciding the terms of their jobs. Workers demanded better pay, benefits, and working conditions. Cesar's family was always on the move. During this time, Cesar attended more than 30 different schools. We went over that lesson last week, Cesar. Too bad you missed it. After eighth grade, Cesar quit school to work full-time in the fields. At age 17, Cesar left to serve in the U.S. Navy. He returned two years later to find nothing had changed in the labor camps. I served my country in a war, but nothing has changed for my people. Growers pay us so little that we are starving. We can't afford doctors or medicine either. Cesar left the labor camps, but his new home was not much better. In 1952, Cesar and his wife, Helen, settled in a Mexican neighborhood in San Jose, California. This poor, overcrowded barrio was called Sal Si Puedes. The name is Spanish for Get Out If You Can. In Sal Si Puedes, Cesar became friends with Catholic priest Donald McDonald. Five-year-olds are working long hours in the fields. They should be in school. They shouldn't have to live like this. Nobody should. Changes must be made here. People need fair wages and safe working conditions. They shouldn't get fired if they're too sick to come to work. Read this book, Life of Gandhi. Gandhi worked for social change in India without using violence. Chapter 2. Getting Organized. 
In June 1952, an Anglo stranger named Fred Ross came to Cesar's home. Ross worked for a Latino civil rights group called the Community Service Organization, CSO. At first, Cesar and his friends didn't trust Ross. The creek your kids play in is dirty. The cops beat you up. Your paychecks are tiny. He seems to understand our problems. What will you do about it? Ross's words caught Cesar's attention. The CSO put an end to segregated schools and theaters in Southern California. We got the cops who beat up those Chicanos thrown in jail. I heard about that. One Latino alone has little power, Cesar, but the CSO has power because we work together. The next day, Cesar knocked on his neighbor's doors. He had agreed to work with the CSO. I've never voted. It's important for Latinos to vote. Only then will things change for us. Read this list of candidates the CSO supports. Cesar was good at organizing people. He soon started a CSO chapter in Salsipuedes and nearby towns. In 1959, Cesar became the executive director of the CSO. Under Cesar's leadership, the CSO became the most powerful Mexican-American organization in the country. Cesar began pushing to start a farm workers' union. In a union, workers can stand together to ask for better treatment from the growers. But CSO members voted to focus on the rights of city Chicanos. Cesar was unable to start a union through the CSO. He decided to resign and start a union on his own. In April 1962, Cesar and Helen moved with their eight children to Delano, California. Cesar began talking with local farm workers right away. We tried a union before. The organizer left us and the union broke up. Then we were blacklisted and couldn't get hired anywhere. I won't leave you. This union is my dream. The contractor charges us for drinking water. We need better wages. I can't even afford running water in my home. By the end of the summer, Cesar had enough members to form a union, the National Farm Workers Association, NFWA. The NFWA held its first meeting in September. Dolores Huerta and Cesar's brother, Richard, were important organizers in the new union. We will fight for our cause. Viva la causa! All farm workers will have a say in their working conditions. Viva la causa! Soon, workers everywhere had heard about Cesar Chavez, the NFWA, and la causa, the cause. We crawl through spiny rose bushes for them. We work at top speed. The growers promised us $9 per thousand plants, but they pay us only $6.50. Rosebush field workers in McFarland, California, asked the NFWA for help. Cesar helped them organize a strike against the Mount Arbor Company. We've got to ship these roses. The longer they sit here, the more money we'll lose. Then we have no choice. After just four days, the growers gave the workers a raise. The strike ended. The NFWA's membership grew after the rose growers' strike. Then, on September 8, 1962, Cesar received news that would bring even more attention to the NFWA. Cesar, Filipino grape pickers are striking in nine vineyards in Delano. The owners will surely ask Chicanos to take those jobs. We cannot take their jobs while they hold out for fair wages. We have to go on strike with them. A few days later, the NFWA held a meeting to discuss joining the Filipino grape pickers. 
They're asking for a forty cent raise to a dollar forty an hour. They're living in poverty. We have to aid our brothers, the Filipinos, in this just cause. Let's go out on strike. Strike, huelga. The NFWA voted to join the Filipinos in their strike. Together, the two groups had at least five thousand people stop work on forty-eight ranches in the San Joaquin Valley. Growers called in strike breakers or replacement workers to work in their fields. Strike! Don't work here. Don't betray your brothers. Chapter three. The Great Delano Grape Strike. As the strike went on, more and more workers joined. Angry farm owners fought back by threatening and beating picketers. Watch out! I don't care if I run over all of you. Someone is going to get hurt. Get out of here! Ah! Oh, it's pesticide. Strikers grew angry, but Cesar insisted on a peaceful strike. Get out of here, scum! We have to fight back. Please, brothers, there is no dignity in violence. How can we stand by while they do this to us? Cesar's idea of nonviolence began to spread. Newspapers and TV stations covered the strike. People across the country saw the peaceful strikers being attacked. Cesar knew the attention would hurt the growers. If we're full of hatred, we can't really do our work. Hatred saps all that strength and energy we need to plan. The NFWA, along with the Filipino Union, the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee (AWOC), gave strikers food, childcare, and a place to sleep and talk. The growers have always kept Filipinos and Chicanos apart in the fields. They pitted us against each other to compete for jobs. Now we work together. Cesar went to other labor unions, churches, and universities to ask for support for the strike. We need money and food. We need people on the picket lines. We need you to join us in La Causa. Donations came, and so did hundreds of volunteers to join the strike. Viva La Causa! What do these picketers from the city know? They never touch soil in their lives. That December, the NFWA took further action. Cesar organized a boycott of all vineyard products from Shenley Industries in California. What's going on? Don't buy anything from Shenley. They don't pay their workers fairly. By March. The strike against the grape growers had lasted six months. Cesar knew he had to gain more attention for La Causa. On March 17, 1963, he and hundreds of farm workers began a march from Delano to Sacramento, California's capital. We will demand a meeting with the governor. We will force him to hear about La Causa. Our suffering will not go unnoticed. We will bring about justice for all farm workers. Near the end of their journey, news arrived for Cesar. Cesar, I have a message from Shenley. They want to sign a contract. The boycott and bad press had hurt Shenley. Cesar met with a lawyer from the company to settle the dispute. The company wants the workers to return to the fields. Then Shenley must give field workers better wages. After 25 days, the marchers reached the capital and heard good news from Cesar. We have reached an agreement with Shenley. They will let the NFWA represent its workers, and they have agreed to a 35 cent raise. Chapter four: 
fighting until the end. The agreement with Shenley was a huge victory for the NFWA. But Cesar and Dolores Huerta were thinking about other battles. We must reach agreements with the other growers. We'll go back to continue the strike with great hopes that it will not last much longer. In July 1967, the NFWA officially joined with the AWOC. They formed a new union called the United Farm Workers Organizing Committee, UFWOC. Cesar was its director. The UFWOC later became the United Farm Workers, UFW. Over the next few years, the UFW won other contracts with growers. Cesar led national boycotts of the produce from growers who refused to work with the UFW. Workers in other unions often supported them. Load those grapes. No way. Those grapes are Di Giorgio. We support the UFW. They're boycotting Di Giorgio. Soon, the UFW asked people to boycott all California grapes. Excuse me, could I ask you to help farm workers by not buying grapes? People all across the country refused to buy grapes. For most people, it was the first time they thought about farm workers and their terrible working conditions. Meanwhile, the growers became more violent. Tension on the picket lines grew. The striker's patience was wearing thin. He ran over Manuel. Kill him. Please, we must remain peaceful. Chavez is a coward. Some strikers reacted to the violence with violence of their own. Finally, at a union meeting, Cesar announced he would not eat until the violence ended. Cesar's hero, Gandhi, had used fasting as a way to protest. You're not going to eat? You'll kill yourself. What will that prove? I will sacrifice myself to remind our people that this struggle is about dignity and values. Violence is not the answer. Cesar went to a room at the Union headquarters. For 25 days, he drank only water and ate no food. Thousands of farm workers arrived to show their support for Cesar. Again, national media covered the event. Priests who supported Cesar also came to Union headquarters. The workers renewed their pledge of nonviolence. Cesar has finally ended his fast. People follow Cesar because he cares about more than just the Union. He wants to do what is right. Finally, in July 1970, the grape growers had lost so much money that they gave in. They met with Cesar to sign an agreement. The UFW will represent all field workers. Workers will have an equal say in deciding fair working conditions. The strikers and the people involved in this struggle sacrificed a lot, sacrificed all of their worldly possessions. Still, Cesar saw many other battles to fight. Growers of lettuce and other crops wouldn't give workers fair wages and refused to let the UFW represent them. Strikes and boycotts took place throughout the 1970s. Tear gas! Get out of here! By the end of the 1970s, the results of Cesar's work were clear. The UFW had more than 100,000 members. These workers received higher pay, regular breaks, vacation days, and health benefits. Throughout the years, Cesar continued to fight for the rights of workers. We'll keep fighting for farm workers. They must be able to work safely in fields free of dangerous pesticides and other chemicals. Cesar died in April 1993. 
He is remembered for his dedication and sacrifice for the good of all farm workers.